Conspiracy theorists like Alex Jones and David Icke often reference Orwell's and Huxley's novels as being an accurate depiction of the elite's endgame, creating a narrative regarding the future unfolding of events that, unfortunately, the majority of prophetically-minded Christians have incorporated into their interpretations of the prophecies contained in the books of Daniel and Revelation. Consequently, many Christians have come to see Orwell's and Huxley's visions as the fulfillment of the prophecies of the Antichrist in his earthly kingdom, and have thus dedicated a great deal of time and effort to exposing the New World Order, believing it to be Satan's true endgame and preparing the world for the Antichrist. But there are several major problems with this view. For one, how could Orwell and Huxley, both of whom were vehemently opposed to the Bible and Christianity, have been given such accurate visions of biblical end times prophecy, if in fact the New World Order is the fulfillment of the books of Daniel and Revelation. Another major problem is that not only is belief in the existence of the New World Order becoming more and more widespread, but there seems to be a growing movement resisting New World Order tyranny. And perhaps most disturbing of all, from a biblical point of view, is that so many of those leading this resistance movement against the New World Order have an overtly anti-biblical agenda. That's what I'm here to do, to help people to understand, to get back in tune with the divine nature of the universe. And I believe that that's going to be required very soon, because when all the systems break down and the Christians, for the first time, begin to think about it. Where is Jesus? I would have thought he would be back by now. There is not going to be a second coming of Christ. There is no guy going to appear on a cloud to judge the human race or change the world. The Christians think they're going to see a Messiah right. come in the clouds, you know, mm. where there's, you know mm. which and is that, ridiculous. And we have to stop looking for an external Messiah. What's going to save us is us. Mm. I've seen the Messiah and the Messiah is us. Very good. Unfortunately, the vast majority of Christians who study the New World Order and directly connect it with end times prophecy have not entertained the possibility of spiritual deception with regard to how the Matrix has been exposed and presented by Orwell, Huxley, and the conspiracy media. The rapid rate at which the Illuminati's plans are being revealed, not only by critics and whistleblowers, but by the elite themselves, suggests that perhaps Big Brother's plans of global domination are a massive red herring that are being revealed for deceptive purposes, in order to serve an even grander agenda, one that has nothing at all to do with the New World Order or the so-called Matrix of Control. Numerous places in the Bible tell us that, unfortunately, the vast majority of humanity will not be saved because they have turned their hearts against God and refused to believe. As Christ tells us in Matthew chapter 7, narrow is the path that leads to life and few find it. And the book of Revelation makes it clear that most of the world, having rejected God in their hearts, will be deceived by the Antichrist, the beast from the sea, and his false prophet, the beast from the earth. But if the vast majority of the world will be deceived by the Antichrist, then why are so many rebelling against the New World Order, if in fact it is where the true spirit of Antichrist is manifesting? And again, why are so many leaders of this growing rebellion movement opposed to the Bible and its vision of the future, believing it to be part of the very control system that enslaves us? While the concept of the false flag is easily understood within the physical realm, it never seems to be applied solely to the spirit realm. Though many believe the top New World Order elites are in direct communication with and ultimately working for some kind of spiritual or interdimensional beings, this narrative still includes human beings who are in full knowledge of what the spirits are ultimately planning. What I am suggesting, however, is the possibility of a massive false flag operation that has been carried out solely by deceptive spirits, who have not brought any human, elite or otherwise, into the fold. What if Satan and his angels have been secretly carrying out their own false flag operation from which the entire human race has been completely compartmentalized? What if for centuries, Satan has been creating a massive problem or crisis, a dark, menacing prison planet, ruled by a secret group of elite bloodlines bent on controlling the world with the intention of eventually exposing it in order to engender a reaction from mankind, who will then demand that something be done about it, at which point Satan will offer the solution. Just as Islamic terrorists were framed for 9-11, 
What if God and his angels were being framed for creating the New World Order? What if the New World Order itself was the real false flag operation, and Satan was now exposing it in order to paint the God of the Bible as the ultimate enemy of mankind, in order to justify an entirely different kind of war over the minds and souls of the human race? What is that where they announce world government in hundreds of newspapers, but then if you talk about it, uh, the Southern Poverty Law Center and ADL say you must be a terrorist. I mean, it's this but, is propaganda I would design, David, to wake people up against me. The New World Order itself is the problem which Satan created and is now exposing in order to force a reaction from humanity, who will then demand that something be done about it. The revelation or disclosure of the great secret, the satanic lie that man is God, the great secret that has been hidden from us by the Illuminati and their Archon Masters. By manufacturing a massive conspiracy to keep the knowledge that man is God's secret, Satan has not only made his lie seem attractive, but true. As it is often said, the cover-up is worse than the crime. People, typically those in power, cover up what they don't want the public to know. And the only reason there is a cover-up is because there is something to hide. Satan has brilliantly applied this concept, what might be called the cover-up effect, to the lie that man is God. For nothing will convince humanity more that it truly is God than the shocking revelation that a global conspiracy has been suppressing this knowledge for centuries. For why would so many powerful people over the course of so many generations go to such great lengths to suppress something that wasn't true? Once the great secret of man's divinity has finally been revealed, mankind will then be able to awaken to the truth and escape the global prison created by the Archons. Therefore, the true satanic agenda preparing the world for the arrival of the biblical Antichrist is not a global prison, but a global prison break. It is not the Matrix, but the escape from the Matrix. The greatest clue to this agenda can be found in Alice Bailey's book, A Treatise on White Magic, a comprehensive guide to the 15 rules of white magic and the tasks which all New Age disciples must perform in order to be considered true white magicians. According to Bailey, the most important task of all was assisting in the release of what she called the prisoners of the planet who were being held captive by the black magicians. And given her diatribe against an international group of businessmen, bankers, and corporations working in unison behind the scenes, it's quite clear that Bailey's black magician prison wardens are one and the same with the Illuminati of today's conspiracy theory narrative, and that the New World Order is the prison from which humanity must be released by the white magicians, the human counterparts of the Ascended Masters or Great White Brotherhood. The release of Earth's prisoners is an integral part of the great divine plan which Bailey claimed was ultimately being overseen by the leader of the Ascended Masters, Sanat Kumara, who Bailey referred to as the Lord of the World, which is the same title given to Satan in the Bible, who is also described as a great deceiver who masquerades as an angel of light. The fulfillment of the divine plan through the release of Earth's prisoners is precisely the purpose which Alex Jones, David Icke, Jordan Maxwell, David Wilcock, and the rest of the New Age conspiracy community is serving. As illumined white magicians, they are leading a Gnostic rebellion against the black magicians controlling the planet, telling us that in order to rise above the dark forces, we must collectively raise our consciousness. Bailey's words reveal the truly occult nature of conspiracy theory and suggest that this growing New Age rebellion against the New World Order is, in reality, an occult civil war between white and black magic. And by exposing the black magic elites and spreading the lie that man is God, the white magicians are carrying out Bailey's instructions, affecting the release of the planet's prisoners from the Matrix and paving the way for humanity's spiritual ascension. George Humphrey, my friend, has written the new book that just came out, available at Amazon.com, Life, Love, Joy, A Story of Human's Origins, The Polarity of Present Choices, and Our Unrealized Potential. <clears throat> and everything that globalists do is about suppressing our potential. And George such a sweetheart. He's selling this book at cost, but it's, it's a powerful book. I just started reading it. Everything that social engineers do is about suppressing human potential. 